Welcome back to grade two. How are you? I hope you're happy and safe. Our lesson today is really interesting. It's plants depend on animals. The objective of our lesson today is to develop and use models to show that the structure of some plant parts and some animal parts aid in pollination and seed dispersal. Before we begin, let's watch a video. Look at these two birds. They are so pretty, right? But what are these two birds doing? What do you think? And look at this sheep. What are these small parts on the body of this sheep? What do you think? And what do you observe? And think about how are these animals helping plants. And write or draw your thoughts below in this space. Page number 29. Stop the video and then when you finish, replay again. For me, I think both animals are carrying seeds. The animals carry the seeds to a new place. Let's back to page number 27. There are two friends. They are talking about what plants need to make more plants. And you will decide which friend has the better idea. Tanya said that, I think some plants need animals to help them make more plants. What do you think is great too? Is this correct? Think about it. What about Ben? Ben said that, I disagree. Animals don't help plants make more plants. They eat plants. What do you think is great too? Is this correct? Think about it. And explain your thinking in this place. When you finish, replay again. For me, I think Talia has the better idea. Because I think some plants need animals to help them spread their seeds so they can make more plants. And through this lesson, we will investigate that. Today we have an inquiry activity. It's observe seeds. The purpose of this activity is to investigate the structure of a variety of seeds. Amazing! The tools for this activity are variety of seeds, paper towel, and hand limbs. Plants need seeds to make new plants. In the video that you watched earlier, you observe seeds attached to animals. In this lesson, we're investigating how plants depend on animals. In this activity, you'll observe different kinds of seeds. For this investigation, you will need a variety of seeds, a paper towel, and a hand lens. Before you begin, make a prediction. How are seeds structured differently? Record your prediction. Begin by placing at least four different kinds of seeds on the paper towel. You'll use your hand lens to look closely at four different seeds. Then you'll describe and draw your observations on a data table. Choose one seed and observe it closely. Pay close attention to its characteristics. Notice the size, shape, texture, and color. What words can you use to describe the seed? Draw what you see. Look closely at a second seed. Pay close attention to its characteristics. Describe and draw what you see. Ask at the third seed. Remember to examine its characteristics. Describe and draw what you see. Last seed. Describe and draw what you see. Now that you've collected your data, take some time to analyze the data and communicate your findings. Use your data to complete the Communicate Information section. As you know, a seed is a part of a plant that can grow into a new plant. Look at this photo. This seed is grown up to a new plant. 
The inside of a seed holds a tiny young plant. It also holds food the new plant uses to grow. There are many different sizes and shapes of seeds. Look at these two different plants and these two different seeds. This is an anise plant and these are anise seeds. This is a marigold plant and these are marigold seeds. Look at these two different seeds. How are these seeds the same and how are they different? They both hold food for the plant to grow. The marigold seeds are long and skinny, while the anise seed is small and round and grows in a star-shaped pod. As you see, the anise seed looks like it could get stuck on an animal or a person's clothing, while the marigold looks light so it fly away by the wind. As you know, seeds need to be dispersed or moved to a new place. Why do seeds need to be dispersed or moved to a new place? Yes, because if so, new plants can grow somewhere else. Some seeds travel by wind. These kinds of seeds are usually very small and light, so they can travel long distances. But other seeds are too heavy to travel by wind. So, these seeds are carried by animals. Some have parts that stick to an animal's fur. And some animals eat seeds, but they may leave seeds behind in a new place, just like this rodent. Look at this photo. How the shape of these seeds help them disperse? What do you think? Think about it and write your answer in this piece, page number 33. For me, I think maple tree seeds are shaped like wings, as you see. This helps them to be easily carried by wind. That's enough for today, grade 2. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.